The Florida Panthers have quietly become one of the bigger success stories of hockey in the South. We're speaking with the team's president and CEO later in the episode. Plus, MLB is fixing its uniforms, eventually. And a Mexican soccer team could be getting the Wrexham treatment. It's Tuesday, April 30th. I'm Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. MLB has heard the message from its fans and players loud and clear. No one likes the new uniforms. They don't like the weird lettering or the colors that are the wrong shade. They don't like how sweaty everyone is getting. And they definitely don't like the see-through pants. So all that's going to change next year. They're probably going to have to live with what they've got for 2024. A memo from the MLB Players Association announced the eventual changes and put the blame for this whole fiasco on Nike. The swoosh rolled out these Vapor Premium uniforms to some fanfare, touting them as high-performance apparel And even on that front, there have been complaints because the uniforms apparently collect sweat more than previous ones. Having the blame pinned on Nike will be a relief for fanatics, which produce the uniforms. Now, of course, there's a ton of pressure on Nike to get it right next year because players don't want to live through a second year of this. And Nike is MLB's official uniform supplier for the rest of the decade. Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney are teaming up with Ava Longoria on soccer team ownership. Reynolds and McElhenney are buying in on Club Necaxa of Mexico's Liga MX. The team already counts Longoria, Justin Verlander, Kate Upton, and Odell Beckham Jr. as part owners and is principally owned by Al Tillis and Sam Porter. That entire sentence, by the way, is also true of the DC Pickleball team. The Cox's owners also presumably include the owner of an NFT, which was tied to a 1% stake in the club that Tillis auctioned off in 2021 during the height of that particular craze. Tillis and Porter bought a 5% stake in Wrexham FC, which is, of course, owned by Reynolds and McElhenney. While no one is committing to a Nakaxa docu-series just yet, given the success of Welcome to Wrexham and that there are at least three production companies held by members of Nakaxa's ownership group, it's fair to speculate. Liga MX team values are lower than other major leagues, including MLS, the most watched league in the U.S. I'm joined now by Florida Panthers president and CEO Matt Caldwell. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Great to have you on. So the team's in the middle of another playoff run. You went to the Stanley Cup last year. What did that Stanley Cup run to the finals mean for the franchise? Uh, it was it was phenomenal. I mean, winning in all sports, uh, winning definitely breeds success, you know, in, in the stands and attendance and excitement about your, your brand. Um, going to the Stanley Cup last year was the first time <clears throat> the team had – advanced to the Stanley Cup uh, since 1996. Uh, the franchise had never won a Stanley Cup before, so we're, we're still seeking that objective. But uh, the, the run last year, the underdog story um, was uh, was great for our fan base. And, you know, we were able to lean into that in the offseason, get more season tickets for the following year, uh, and then for the team to then follow that up with another great season. Uh, how much of a correlation do you see between your success and your attendance? Very strong correlation. You know, uh, you know, last year going to the cup, um, you know, uh, enables you to, like I said, mentioned before, you know, build fans during that run. You know, we, we enable people to come in, buy tickets and then get, you know, better pricing if they buy season tickets for the following season. So that helped us bank in even more fans going into this year. So the the cup was was a huge inflection point for us, but but I think even broader, you know, this is now our fifth straight playoff appearance. Um, so that kind of consistency gives a fan base hope, and and um, <clears throat> they you know expect for the Panthers to compete every night, day in and day out. So um, that consistency of, consistency over the last five years is probably even bigger. And then you know having the cup run last year, you know, really shock on us. So. Uh, and, and again, you know, following it up this year with another good season, um, you know, it, it makes conversations with fans a lot easier. You know, uh, when we, my, myself and Bill Zito, our general manager, addressed those season ticket holders, uh, you know, I joked to them, like, what else more could you complain about now because um, of, you know, how far we've come. And the franchise um, did have a pretty tough run before our owner bought the team. And, but now, you know, we have, a, you know, just a, a first class environment and obviously a lot of success on the ice. So, uh, but that doesn't, that doesn't also take away from all the work we do in the community, on our business side, our, our ticket sales staff, all the relationships they've built with <clears throat> small businesses, fans in the local market. And 
now the team winning, you know, it's hard to control wins and losses, but when they're winning, it just catapults everything that we do. And I'm not asking you to open your books or anything, but what does a deep playoff run like that do for your, your annual revenue? Uh, a significant effect. You know, we, we typically uh, just budget for the regular season because it's hard to uh, predict if you're going to make the playoffs. There's so much competition, especially in the NHL. There's a lot of good teams vying for the playoffs. So once we get the playoffs, you know, all that additional revenue, we, we have costs that are associated with it, but it's a, it's a big hit to the bottom line um, and something that we weren't, you know, planning to go into each year. But then the, the domino effect is huge. You know, more sponsors want to get involved with your brand. <clears throat> we had a, a new naming rights partner this year, a new uh, helmet partner, which is our helmet logo that we did. Um, and, you know, a number of other big brands that, that joined on once they saw, saw all the attendance growth and uh, the arena packed like every night. So the <clears throat> effect on, you know, obviously more people in the building, you get more food and beverage, more parking, more uh, merchandise sales. Uh, and then corporate sponsors want to come in because you have so many more eyeballs that are looking at their brand. So uh, it's been a very material effect on our revenue. And when you get an influx like that, um, is that, and how do you treat that? Is it something where you just try to like put it into something sustainable? Do you, you know, spend it on something big or yeah, how, how do you treat, you know, a, yeah, an influx of cash like that? Well, we, we certainly have, um, uh, you know, building uh, improvements that we've done around the arena. We recently put in a whole new sound system um, we've, uh, improved some of our, uh, bars and clubs around the arena. So if you, if you walk around our concourse, we recently put in, uh, the Jamison crossbar, <clears throat> which is a big brand, you know, um, key location, uh, on the plaza level. So we, we, we're reinvesting a lot of that money into the building. Uh, and, and then also, uh, we're not always going to be winning. So we're, we're stockpiling to make sure that we can, you know, weather ups and downs, um, and improve our P&L over time. So it's, uh, you know, we, we want to put some of that extra money to, to use, but at the same time, we want to plan for the future as well. And you mentioned your, your work in the community, your relationships with small businesses. You know, hockey in the southern part of the country has largely been a success, you know, with a couple of exceptions. Is there a particular way to make hockey work in your region? Yeah, I think, um, you know, for us, you know, the Tampa Bay Lightning are a great example. You know, they're big rivals for us on the ice, but they've had a long 10 plus year run, multiple Stanley Cup appearances. They've won the cup twice in the last 10 years. Um, so that kind of consistency is great, again, for the market. But they, they do a lot. And, and we followed suit in youth hockey, for example. We, we just built a brand new <clears throat> practice facility right downtown Fort Lauderdale. Uh, two sheets of ice when the team's not using uh, one of the sheets, we'll be doing <clears throat> like learn escape programs, learn to play uh, recreation leagues. Um, we have three sheets of ice that we operate in Coral Springs, um, which is closer to the arena. So that, that now gives us five sheets of ice to keep growing the game. Because once you get the younger generation involved, they want to come to more games. They want to bring their parents or guardians. Uh, so that's huge. We're, we're very active in the community. You'll see every night we honor veterans. Um, our foundation is very active around youth hockey, around children's education, uh, the conservation of the Panther, our you know team name, um, and then of course you know giving back to our military and all. So so those personal and uh, community relationships um, builds a lot of goodwill. And you know if we're working with a certain nonprofit that never been to a hockey game before, but we're supporting their group and they're coming out to games, you, you're building fans like that every day. So, um, and you, you know, we, we don't have generations and generations of, of hockey fans. Um, you know, we've, we've really only been around 30 years, which is, which is not a lot like relative to some of the original six teams, Canadian markets. So, uh, now that we've had success on the ice, we're, you know, building a fan base that, um, can be generational that, you know, fans that are coming today, their kids are going to take over their season tickets or have fond memories of seeing us, you know, run to the cup. And, and that's how you build like a lifelong fan base. Uh, and do you interact at all with the other Miami teams or even events like the, the Grand Prix? Yes, absolutely. We get great relationships with all, all four teams, um, also now into Miami. Um, so there's really five major teams in the market. Um, <clears throat> the Miami Heat and the Florida Panthers the last two seasons, we've been in the playoffs at the same time. Our players have <clears throat> gotten close and helped and promote each other. Um, you know, obviously we have the F1 coming up. So, uh, sometimes our players want to go out, you know, to one of those events if they have an off day, 
Uh, some of our players recently went to the Miami Open, which is at the Hard Rock Stadium where the Dolphins play. Um, you know, the Marlins, we do uh, collaborations with them where their players come out to games, uh, like bang our drum to kick off the game. Some of our players go throw out a first pitch at a Marlins game. So um, we love, you know, partnering with the other teams because for us, you know, rising tide lifts all boats and the more people that are watching sports, the better for us. Zooming out to some some broader NHL topics, we have a team relocating for the first time in a long time. The Coyotes are moving to Utah. What do you expect from hockey in Utah and from the you know the Ryan Smith led ownership group? Yeah, from the outside looking like outside looking in, he, he looks like a great owner. He's already owned the Utah Jazz for a number of years. He's made you know great strides there. He's obviously had success in business, um, and you can see as soon as they made this announcement, they already have over 28,000 deposits for season tickets. So clearly they're off to a good start. Um, the Coyotes hockey operations, which is being transferred over to Utah, uh, they've been in a rebuild mode for a number of years. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think that, you know, maybe they can hit the ground running and give the fans of Utah, you know, a good taste of, of some fun hockey. So I, I think it's good for everyone that a market like that, that's growing, that has a very serious owner, well capitalized, you know, who wants to come in and win. So we, we, we welcome the competition. And yeah, you just mentioned a couple aspects of, you know, uh, what you might look for in an owner. Are there other things you look for in, you know, an ownership group that wants to join the league? I mean, recently we had the senators were, were sold. And yeah, is there anything where you, you look and say, okay, this looks like, you know, they're, they're going to be a welcome addition? You know, it's, it's hard to predict. And I think Gary Bettman, our commissioner, does a great job vetting and, you know, figuring out the best owners to bring into to the league. But I think at the end of the day, it's all about credibility and, and people that are committed to, you know, winning, but also investing in the community. Sports entertainment are such a big part of people's lives. So uh, the more people that can put on that first class experience in their respective markets, I think is just great for the overall sport. And right now it looks like all, all franchises are pretty stable and um, all of them are, are committed to, to put on a good, good experience for our fans. And that, that's what helps the game overall. Expansion has already sort of started in the sense that um, if Alex Murillo can um, get an arena in the Phoenix area, you'll have a new franchise there. Um, and I have to imagine there will be at least one more coming at some point down the road. Um, is there a market you think would be a great target for expansion? Um, I haven't. Um, I don't have a. You know, I, have, I, got, I got my hands full enough here in South Florida, so I haven't. Uh... Uh, I don't know a particular market that'd be good, but it's nice to see that a lot of markets are interested. You, you see what's in the, the headlines and uh, you saw, you know, uh, Salt Lake City and, and Ryan Smith come in very quickly to, you know, this was kind of a hybrid situation where it was, a, uh, you know, a, the hockey ops of, of one franchise is ro relocating. So it's not like a pure expansion move, uh, but it's clearly a new market, right? We don't have hockey in Salt Lake City today. Um, and then, like you said, you know, the Alex Merlo has, you know, a five-year timeline to go and, and relaunch a, a new expansion uh, team in, in Arizona. So if, he, if he's able to do that, that would become the, the 33rd uh, team in, in the league. So <clears throat> we're interested to see how that plays out and we're interested to see how Salt Lake does over these next couple of years. And, you know, it's up to the commissioner and the rest of the owners on uh, what other markets they, may, they might welcome into the league. And uh, before we let you go, uh, just uh, what are you most looking forward to for, you know, a hopefully deep Panthers playoff run? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, uh, after watching last year, we've learned a lot, especially on the business side and you know, multiple home games would be great, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I think that we're, we're just building a fan base every single game, more people are coming and you already have well over 90% of our current base, you know, renewed for season tickets. So we're, we're in growth mode. So every, every win, every series win just helps us bring in more fans to, to the Panthers brand. So um, we're, we're excited for hopefully another deep run and building off that in the off season. All right. Sounds good. Matt All Caldwell, right. thanks so much for joining us on the Thank show. Thank you, Arm. Appreciate the time. That's it for today. Drop us a rating and review wherever you like to tune in or just tell a friend about the show. Thanks for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.